what's going on guys and welcome back to Lunar Witch. Today we are going to be talking about the deity Loki. So the good thing is I have a lot of news about Loki. I have a lot of information on Loki. I'm not going to give every single thing in this video, but what I will tell you is Loki really is an amazing deity to work with. And I know I say that about a lot of deities, but I'm telling you for a fact that Loki has a really bad image, but if you actually work with him, he is nothing like he is portrayed in other areas. So, for instance, you guys see him on, like, if you have Disney Plus or you watch the show Loki and stuff like that, like, yes, obviously he's the god of mischief and, you know, he's the trickster god and stuff like that, but he is very misrepresented in a lot of stuff. And the thing is, he is very helpful when working with him as a deity. He's also a lot different than people portray him to be. And what I mean by this is Loki is meant to be with you and show you truths about yourself. What I mean by this is when you work with Loki for a specific period of time, so for instance, I said I used to work with Loki. Loki is no longer with me anymore because he's already shown me everything that he could have possibly shown me and there was no reason for him to be here anymore. So he took his leave and obviously I said thank you for all the stuff that he did for me. But when working with Loki for a certain amount of time, he will show you truths about yourself, even if they are truths that you don't particularly like about yourself. These are things that he will bring to light, things that you will now have to face in order to get through these things. Because if he is bringing these to light and he is trying to show you something about yourself that might need to change, he will utilize this and he will simply put this into perspective like, hey, you need to work on this. This is something about yourself that is holding you back and this is the truth about it. And then you will have to utilize your own work ethic to move and push through that. He is there to show you, you are there to work on it. And when he sees you progress, he is extremely happy when you do actually get through that. Now, mind you too, he's not one of those deities that are gonna be like, catering to you in like a fatherly or a motherly way, Loki will specifically show you those truths. And if you are living in denial, if you are very reckless and you don't want to come to grips with those truths, he will 100% make fun of you and consistently rub your nose in it until you come to grips with that truth. I understand that this may seem a little bit rude and some people not, might not like this, but this is tough love. Loki will utilize tough love. This is how he works within his deity work with people. He is not, he is the trickster god. He is mischievous. This is two attributes about him that work. He's a shapeshifter. He can do a lot of stuff. But what I'm trying to tell you guys is he's not one of those deities that are going to sit here and be like, oh, you know what? You're doing great, blah, blah, blah. He's not like that. He will utilize tough love. If you are very stubborn, if you are a stubborn person that can never come to grips with certain truths in life, he will continuously rub your nose in it. You will fail over and over and over again if you cannot come face to face with the truth that he is trying to open up within you. If you cannot come to grips with that truth, he will consistently make sure that you know about it. And this is one of the things that I actually really liked about Loki is that he won't give up. Even if his actions seem very rude, mischievous, or stressful at times, he means well. He wants you to focus on those truths. He wants to see you get over that hump and succeed when he shows you that truth. And the truth could be anything. It could be like maybe he wants you to get out of a specific job. Maybe you're in a job that really doesn't cater to who you actually are. Maybe it's a thankless job. Or maybe you're in a relationship that just doesn't work well for you. Maybe you're in a relationship that you've been trying to get out of for years, but you can just never do it because you're so focused on like not wanting to be alone or something like that. Loki will show you those truths and show you like, hey, even if you feel this way, this is the actual truth about it. And then you will have to fight with your own personal stuff in order to get through and reach the truth that he is trying to show you because he is trying to show you the potential that you have. A lot different than what you see Loki in, and like if you're watching the Avengers or something like that, you see him trying to take over New York, or you see that he's consistently messing with his brother Thor and stuff like that. Loki, yeah, messes with his brother Thor and Odin and stuff like that. I mean, it's happened, but I mean, with his deity work, he's not doing half of the stuff that Hollywood tries to portray him in doing. He is an 
awesome deity to work with and I am very thankful that he did come into my life and that he did show me these truths because I'm a stubborn person. If I didn't have that tough love from him, it would have been a long time coming eventually. And Anubis has tough love as well, but Anubis also has a very fatherly figure to him too. So even if that tough love is there, I just kind of, with more with Anubis, I kind of feel like uh, it's one of those like, I'm not mad at you, I'm just disappointed kind of things, and that hurts. Like, that hurts me a lot whenever I hear something like that from Anubis, but, like, it's not enough for me to be like, okay, but, yeah, I'm disappointed. Like, I don't want to disappoint Anubis, obviously, but me personally, with how stubborn I am, it's not enough for me to be like, okay, let me go through and, like, do this and do this and do this. It's enough for me to focus on one specific thing that Anubis may have shown me, but it's not enough for me to take everything into light and then do something. So that is why when Loki came in, Loki worked very well with Anubis when I was working with these two because Anubis knew what Loki was trying to do. Anubis understood that that tough love was something that I ultimately needed in my life. And that tough love that Loki gave me really helped me turn a lot of stuff around in my witchcraft, a lot of stuff around in my life. So what I will tell you guys before we get into the mythology is he is an awesome deity, and if he's calling out to you, understand that this will happen. Your truths will come to light while working with Loki, and these truths may be things that you like, or they may be something that you really, really don't like in general. So you need to be prepared for that while working with him. So with this little introduction of Loki, let's get into the mythology of him. The great trickster god of the Norse pantheon, Loki was a devious deity known for his many schemes and deceptions, a shapeshifter. Loki's forms were as varied as the motives for his mischief, which included wealth, women, wisdom, and the sheer pleasure of his connivory. With Loki, appearances were never quite what they seemed. While Loki's antics frequently embroiled the gods in sticky situations, his tricks often rescued them from troubled times as well. Loki was a member of the Asir tribe of deities. Loki, along with Odin, Thor, and Freya, constituted one of the four ruling deities of the Norse thought. Though his mythology consistently overlapped with those of his divine counterparts, Loki differed from them in important ways. Where Thor, Freya, and even Odin, a trickster himself, strove to impose a righteous order amongst the gods, Loki's erratic behavior called the very nature of his allegiances into question. For example, it was predicted that during Ragnarok, Loki would fight on the side of the Jotnar against the gods. In truth, Loki was neither for or against the gods. Like the trickster figures of other mythologies, he was neither good nor evil, choosing instead to be a partisan of disorder itself, a figure who tested boundaries and challenged conventions. His chaotic inconsistency reminded believers that the boundaries between good and evil were far more tenuous than they suspected. Loki's chief attributes were his wit and wile. He seldom engaged in physical combat and as such carried no weapons. He also lacked any well-attested charms, garments, or vehicles. Loki was the shapeshifter amongst the gods. On various occasions, he took the form of a salmon, a flea, a fly, and a mare. He also took the form of human beings, such as old women, who fatefully refused to weep for the fallen Baldur. Loki's great mischief always stood front and center in the trickster god's rich mythological tradition. One day, Loki was feeling mischievous and decided to cut off all of Sif's hair. Sif was Thor's wife and was known for her beautiful flowing locks of blonde hair. Naturally, when Thor discovered Loki's prank, he flew into a rage and threatened Loki with violence. Desperate to quell Thor's anger, Loki promised to find the Black Elves and have them make a replacement. Wanting to make amends, Loki traveled to find the Black Elves, Dwarves, and other Jotnar that were located deep in the bowels of the earth. There, Loki found the sons of Ivaldi, who were known as the greatest of craftsmen. The sons of Ivaldi soon fashioned a new set of hair for Sif and two other marvels. One was a ship, which could always find wind when its sails was raised, and the ship was folded up into a package so small that it could fit in someone's pocket. The other wonder was doors crafted were the Gungnir, a spear with unstoppable thrust. Seeing the wondrous treasures the dwarves had made gave Loki an idea. After collecting the treasures from the sons of Ivaldi, Loki sought out the dwarf brothers Broker and Sindri, who were themselves master craftsmen. Loki taunted them, claiming they could never craft anything as perfect as the creations of the sons of Ivaldi. He even wagered his head against the claim. With their pride on the line, the brothers took the wager and set to work on the forge. In an attempt to distract them from their work, Loki transformed himself into a fly and bit the dwarves repeatedly. Broker and Sindri were unfazed, however, and soon presented Loki with three masterworks of their own. The first was Gullenbursti, 
A golden maned boar that glowed in the dark, ran through water and air, and traveled faster than horses. The second was Draupnir, a golden ring that sprouted eight identical rings every ninth night. The third and final item was a warhammer called Mjolnir which in the hands of Thor became one of the most fabled items in all of Norse lore. Loki returned to Asgard with Broker and bid the gods to judge which of the six items was the greatest. Loki gave their hair to Thor so that Sif would once again wear beautiful golden locks. He gave Gungnir to Odin and offered Skidbladnir to Freya. The gods agreed that Thor's hammer was the finest of all of creations, but when Broker went to claim Loki's head, he found that the god had fled. Thor helped find him, but Broker was still unable to claim Loki's head as the trickster god riddled his way out of trouble. On a side note, while working with Loki as a deity, acts of service are something that Loki is particularly happy with. Loki is particularly happy when you do work with children, especially those who have been through a disaster, are disfigured, or orphaned. He is also pleased when his devotees speak up and tell the truth when everyone else in the situation is avoiding it for whatever reason. He smiles upon work with the mentally ill, especially for those who suffer from PTSD. Donating to causes that look after society tries to hide or forget, like the homeless, addicts, veterans, and the elderly, is also something that makes Loki extraordinarily happy while working with him in your deity work. But it should also be noted that as I've explained before, that working with Loki for any period of time will bring the light of the truths to you. If you are hiding from something in your life, whether it be the true vocational calling or where you really wish you could be in life, or the fact that your relationship was over three years ago, he will find these things in some cases and force you to confront them. Now this brings me to exactly what I was telling you guys before. So you heard a little bit of the mythology and I actually added on at the end of the mythology some of the things or acts of services that he likes to see because I wanted you guys to actually see that even though he is considered the trickster god and a mischievous god, he is also somebody who really does care. And although his ways may not be very favorable to a lot of people, they are effective in the ways that he has in order to help people see the truths about themselves. So that was just a little bit of the mythology on Loki, so let's get into what you can start offering Loki. If you were going to go for incense offerings, some of the offerings that you can do are cinnamon, mulled wine, and dragon's blood. Now, Here's what I'm going to tell you. Cinnamon and Dragon's Blood, very easy to find. No matter metaphysical stores you go into, if you go into like a Hobby Lobby or anything like that, you can usually find Cinnamon and uh, Dragon's Blood incense pretty easily. But most of the time, mulled wine incense are usually homemade and you can rarely find them in regular stores. You will have to go to a metaphysical store in order to try to find mulled wine incense. You could also buy them offline, but you have to be very careful while buying certain things offline because you do not know what is ethically sourced and what is authentic as opposed to somebody that is just taking something and saying that this is what it is. You know what I mean? So you have to make sure that when you're buying from offline, if you do try to buy offline, you're gonna wanna make sure that this person is a trusted seller. But if you wanna be careful and you're just starting to work with Loki, definitely start looking into just cinnamon and dragon's blood incense. They're the two easiest ones to find. You can find them everywhere. So utilize those two incense while working with Loki and placing those on his altar as an offering. As for food and drink offerings, Loki particularly has a sweet tooth. So candies, cookies, pixie sticks, things like this, these could be food offerings that you leave on his altar for him. He especially enjoys sweet foods and fruits and stuff like that. So cookies, pixie sticks, candy, anything along those lines, if you can find those and place those on his altar, this is going to be something that actually really makes him happy. On top of that, for liquid offerings, most alcohols are the majority of the things that you're going to want to put on there for liquid offerings. Uh, personally, when I used alcoholic offerings, I would use like Jack Daniels, whiskey, like stuff like that, because I know that whiskey just so happened to be one of the offerings that he greatly enjoyed as a liquid offering. So whiskey or types of candy, these are going to be very good food and drink offerings to leave on his altar for him. So for candle colors, you can leave on there. Loki has a lot of them. You can use red, orange, black, gold, silver, green, purple, magenta. There's a whole lot of colors for Loki. The major one that you will want to try to look for is definitely green and black if you can find those two. If not, and you can find gold and silver candles, these will be also be very good for him. The purple ones will also be very good for him. But the easiest ones to usually find for people are usually the greens, the blacks, just the basic colors like red and orange too. Like These are very easy to find. So if you're just starting to work out with him and you can't find like these candles here, for instance, like the gold and the silver ones, like the one I have for Anubis is gold, the one I have for Artemis is silver. 
these are easy for me to find because my Hobby Lobby, my local Hobby Lobby has these at their store, so I can always go there and buy them. But not all stores usually have these types of candles. They usually just have basic colors. So if you are looking for just basic colors for his altar, red, orange, green, purple, magenta, these are all very easy colors to find for his altar. He will very much enjoy having these candle colors on his altar for him. As for herb offerings, cloves, holly leaves, if you can find holly leaves, these are very good. Also lavender, lavender is very good to place on his altar as well. Now I know a lot of people might have allergies to lavender. If this is the case, just take the lavender and put it into a jar and cork it. Do not allow that to be out in the open if you have allergies to it because you will be sneezing a lot. A lot of people that I know that do have allergies to lavender will usually take the lavender and place it into just a little container where they can cork it so that they don't sneeze and have any of the sniffles or anything like that because the worst possible thing is going to bed at night and constantly sniffing and sneezing because you have allergies to the lavender that's sitting right next to you at your altar or something like that. So with that being said, if you do have an allergy to lavender, um, just make sure that you place it into one of those little small little cylinders that I always show you guys for spell jars and just cork it shut so that you don't sneeze and you don't do anything along those lines because lavender is a big offering for Loki and he really does like it. Cloves and holly leaves as well but for the majority of what I saw when I used to work with him, anytime I put lavender on his altar, I would watch his candle flames consistently grow, be steady, strong flames, just like these ones over here. They looked exactly like this. A lot of the times when I placed like cloves and holly leaves on there, the flames did still look like this, but they were a lot smaller. So I noticed that he did enjoy certain offerings a little more, and lavender just so happened to be one of them. So just keep that in mind that if you have an allergy, Place it into a small spell jar so that you don't sneeze or have the sniffles or have your nose water while you're just trying to relax in your room. As for crystal offerings, red jasper, amber, garnet, goldstone, obsidian, these are all very good to place on his altar. So if you can find any of these five crystals that I just told you, it is going to be greatly appreciated by him because crystals just so happen to be one of the biggest things that I noticed that he really likes on there. I only got to talk to about two people about Loki, um, just to see their experiences compared to mine when I worked with them. They said the same thing, but the majority of the time, the one crystal that he really enjoyed being on there, well, the, the three, I would say, are Obsidian, Red Jasper, and Goldstone. These just so happen to be the three biggest ones that he enjoyed. But Amber and Garnet are still crystals that he will enjoy and he will take to face value as an offering. So if you do find Amber and Garnet and stuff like that and you want to place that on his altar, obviously an altar is coming from you. You are making it for that deity as kind of like a respect thing. So even if you place the Amber and the Garnet on there, it's still going to be taken as an offering. It's still going to be appreciated by the deity. But the three that he likes the most are definitely going to be that Red Jasper, the Obsidian, and the Goldstone. So if you can find those three, definitely place those on his altar. As for Loki's sacred animal, it is the snake. He is greatly associated with the snake and stuff like that. A lot of people say that he's associated with the snake because of the fact that he's the trickster god. And, you know, when you usually call people a snake, you're usually saying that they're sneaky, they're mischievous, so on and so forth. This is why a lot of people feel like he's associated with the snake. I personally don't have a lot of information behind that. A lot of the information I've looked up is literally just Ib saying that his sacred animal is the snake. So snakes are definitely associated with Loki. He's also associated with wolves as well. So if you can find any snake or wolves aesthetic and stuff like that, place that on his altar. Fenrir was a giant wolf and that just so happened to be one of his children. So if you can find that, it will be a huge respect thing to place a snake or a wolf on his altar as his sacred animal. So keep that in mind because sacred animals going out of your way and placing that in the altars, this is always a great sign of respect, especially if you do just get like a little picture or an actual statue of said deity. This will also be a good sign of respect as well. As for signs of Loki, so these are different. So again, as I've told you in most deity videos, um, they will appear in your dreams, your meditations, so on and so forth. Just understand that Loki might appear as not just himself, but maybe shape-shifted into something else. A lot of the times people see snakes within their visions, which is um, they'll see like a man and then shape-shift into a snake. Like you'll see him out in the field and all of a sudden that man will disappear. And when you walk out into the field, you'll see snakes. I've seen people say that they've seen stuff like this in their visions. I've also heard that Spiders. If you see a lot of spiders just coming out of nowhere in your house, your apartment, I know a lot of people are going to say, oh my god, spiders, like I'm terrified of spiders, so on and so forth. 
take that as a sign. If you are a witch and you are afraid of spiders, I can't really tell you not to be afraid of spiders, but what I can tell you is huge sign that Loki is around because if you don't like spiders and you are all of a sudden seeing a lot of them within your apartment or your house or stuff like that, Loki might be doing that as just kind of like a trick to mess with you and just be mischievous because he knows you're afraid of him, but at the same time, he's letting you know he's there. So take this also at face value that Loki may be calling out to you. This may be a sign from him. So Loki will appear in visions and meditations. Like I said, some people see him for who he really is. Some other people will see him transform into a snake. Other people might just see snakes in general. And as I said too, the spiders in the apartment, in the house, whatever it may be, this is also a big sign that he may be also trying to call out to you or just show you like I'm here. So we went over a lot today in this video. For candle colors, like I said, we're just going to recap red, orange, black, silver, gold, purple, magenta. These are all colors that you can place on his altar. Green as well. These are all big colors that you could put on there, but if you're going to start off making an altar for him and you're just starting to work with him, just start off easy. Get the red, the orange, the green, the black, whatever it may be. Just get the basic colors for now. Place those on his altar. I promise you it'll be the easiest thing that you can do when setting up an altar. And then as time goes on, uh, you'll just start adding stuff. When you go to metaphysical stores or you find stuff at a store, you're just going to start adding stuff to the altar as offerings. This always happens. So even if your altar looks very basic at first, don't worry about that because eventually you're going to notice some time down the road that your altar is packed with stuff for offerings. Um, as for incense offerings, if you're going to do anything, like I said, the mulled wine, the cinnamon, and the dragon's blood, these are going to be three really good incense offerings. Mulled wine is going to be very difficult to find. So if you can't find it, that's fine. Cinnamon and dragon's blood are going to be three of the biggest offerings that you can do. And as for herb and drink offerings, like I said, two, you can place cloves, you can place holly leaves. The lavender is going to be the big one, but like I said, if you have allergies to that, you're going to want to be careful. You're going to want to make sure that you don't have that in the open because I don't want you sniffling, I don't want you sneezing, I don't want you doing anything like that because I know that a lot of people have allergies to lavender. So just keep that in mind to put it in the spell jar and cork it so that you don't have these types of allergies to it. As for the food offerings, like I said, you're going to go with the candies, pixie sticks. If you can find anything sweet, cookies, anything like that, place that on his altar. He really, really enjoys this type of stuff. And any type of alcohol. I used whiskeys in particular. I looked it up and saw that he really does enjoy whiskey, so I would place Jack Daniels on there. I'd place a lot of stuff like that on his altar, and it was very much appreciated to him whenever I would place these types of offerings on his altar for him. As for crystal offerings, the red jasper, the amber, the garnet, the obsidian, the goldstone, these are all really good crystal offerings to put on there. Obsidian and goldstone will definitely be very good to place on there. Um, the amber is definitely going to be good to place on there. Garnet and all these other stuff too that I keep telling you guys. You know, it's, it's your altar. Just keep that in mind that when you guys are creating it, you're creating it for that deity. So even if you don't get the ones that I say, I would suggest getting these ones first. It's okay because you are the one making the altar and it's still going to be very much appreciated between the deity that you are doing this for that specific deity. So keep that in mind that even if you don't get all of those crystals, you can still get a few of them and he'll still be very happy that you got those crystals for an offering. Going now to like the sacred animals too, if you can find snake aesthetics or wolf aesthetics, the snake just had to represent him in general. The wolf aesthetic is nice. It's not really known as one of his sacred animals too much, but the fact that Fenrir is considered a giant wolf and represents his son, this is something that just shows a huge sign of respect because Loki actually really loved Fenrir and he really cared about Fenrir in general, but Getting this and placing this on his altar could be a huge sign of respect. So if you can find the wolf, if you can find anything that has to regard the snake and stuff like that, two really huge offerings that you can place on his altar right there. And as I said too, if you can find a statue or a picture that you can just place in a frame, this will also be a huge sign of respect for you and the deity as well. And as for signs of Loki, like I said too, I put it in a huge retrospect for you when we were going in. But he will appear in visions, he will appear in meditations, sometimes he will appear in his form, sometimes he will shapeshift, sometimes he will be a snake, other times he may be something else, so you gotta keep a journal of your dreams. You have to pay attention because Loki is very difficult to depict in meditations and visions. If you're seeing a man switch into a snake, that's a pretty major depiction right there, but a lot of times it's not as obvious as this because again, trickster god, mischievous, he might make you work 
to understand that he is calling out to you. As I said too, the spiders in the apartment and the house and stuff like that, if you see these are coming out of nowhere and they're just all of a sudden there and they're not usually there, this could be a huge sign that Loki is calling out to you as well. So also keep that in mind too. So guys, before I leave off on this video today, just keep in mind. I told you guys this at the beginning. I want to say it now at the end of the video too, if you've already, if you even made it to the end of this video, because I know some people kind of just jump around and look for specific information. But if you made it to the end of this video, he will tell you the truths about yourself. He is an extraordinary deity to work with because he will utilize tough love. It's not like a high school bully kind of tough love but it is kind of like an older brother or an older sibling kind of tough love, kind of like just telling you how the world actually works, trying to make you realize the realization that you should have realized whether it be months ago, years ago, whatever it may be, he's trying to get you to realize, listen, if you just realize this truth about yourself, you're going to be able to push forward and progress and have the potential to do what I'm showing you, you had the potential to do to begin with. So keep that in mind. It is not him making fun of you. It is not him trying to be rude to you. It is him utilizing tough love to get you to realize those truths about yourself. So again, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, or anything that I may not have answered, leave that down below in the comments section as well. And if you're new to this channel and you're just seeing this video for the first time, subscribe to the channel. We have plenty, plenty of stuff to go along with this video as well. And until next time, I will see you here on the Lunar Witch.